But biomass includes a wide range of uh, organic forms of materials that are grown in many different ways. It goes from woods, herbaceous biomass, to algae. But in terms of biofuels, we try to focus on, on biomass sources that are renewable, meaning they, their growth periods are within a five to seven year time frame. Oak trees that grow in your backyard and have been growing there for 30, 40, maybe even 100 years, we don't necessarily consider fuels from those trees to be renewable, so they may not uh, meet the standard for a biofuel, but they are certainly a type of biomass. The biomass cycle is a lot shorter time frame than that of fossil fuels. Again, fossil fuels uh, have been in gestation for dozens of centuries. The biomass cycle is in the terms of 10 to 20 year time frame, which means that every 10 to 20 years, for e every carbon molecule that you emit in your exhaust will eventually be recovered in the form of a new tree, and eventually part of it will be sequestered in the form of root material. Biomass provides a way to recycle carbon in a net zero fashion. Food dynamics are very complex and it takes into account not just our use of uh, feedstock for fuel but also the dynamics in the markets, uh, speculation, petroleum prices. As we move towards non-edible sources of energy, there will be a le less concern about whether we're competing with food. Although we do have exploding growth in population, there are a lot of companies that are working to improve the yields and productivity of our food supply in a way that I think in the future we'll be able to meet both our food and biofuel needs. Advanced biofuel technologies are pathways to clean, sustainable biofuels that are compatible with existing vehicle technologies. These technologies provide uh, renewable fuels from sources that don't compete with food and that are environmentally friendly. The biological platform employs uh, microbes and enzymes to break down biomass into their constituent compounds and produce primarily alcohols such as ethanol and butanol. Butanol is a uh, fuel that can replace gasoline in existing vehicles. The thermochemical pathway, on the other hand, uses heat and pressure to break down biomass and then synthetically produce uh, hydrocarbon-like fuels that are almost identical to gasoline and diesel that we use in our vehicles today. Stephen Shu, the Secretary of Energy, identified mechanization of agriculture as one of the areas that could dramatically change how we transport, collect, and convert our biomass feedstock. There are going to be breakthroughs that would enable us to convert our feedstock readily at the source into uh, products that we can use either locally or transport to a refinery where it can be upgraded into uh, conventional gasoline and diesel. Both of these approaches can exist simultaneously. I think there will be some technologies that, we, that will be better suited to large-scale processing. For right now, because of the high capital investment required, I think the distributed system has a greater promise in the short term. The challenge for biofuels is to become economic compared to petroleum fuels. Petroleum fuels have already benefited from many years of investment in the infrastructure that helps us collect petroleum, even if it's from foreign sources. Now, biomass doesn't have that advantage. All kinds of energies require some initial support. Once that initial support is in place, I believe that biomass fuels will become economically competitive as well as more environmentally friendly than our fossil fuel sources. When the ethanol industry was just starting, we had to compete with Brazil, which produces sugarcane, which has a higher productivity. The modern corn ethanol industry has already addressed a lot of their concerns in terms of how can they produce ethanol. And several leaders in that industry have mentioned that the ethanol industry could move forward without further subsidies. There are several technologies that are at different stages of commercialization. The timeline will, it will be heavily dependent on the current market conditions and public support. If uh, oil prices drop as they have in the past, that would damper our ability to bring to market a lot of these new technologies. But if there is uh, robust public support, then I can see a lot of uh, novel thermochemical and biochemical technologies uh, coming into the market within the next five and up to 20 years. 
The growth of the biofuel industry needs entrepreneurs and startups just like you. We need innovation, we need new ideas, we need investment, and everybody can play a role in making our biofuel industry a reality for the future. But before we can achieve these goals, we also need public support. We need our consumers to understand that the amount of CO2 that we're emitting is no longer sustainable and that there is a value to be able to use clean uh, energy sources.